I genuinely don't remember if I filmed an intro to this. This is why you don't take like two month hiatuses when you do projects. So as some of you may know, I have a very, very, very large project that I am working on that I won't really be able to show you much until about, let's say, November, December of next year. Some of you may also know that I really like to sew clothing. And some of you may also know that I am uh, recently engaged. Eh? It hasn't been recent. It's been almost a year. If we sit here and we think about those three factors, we may be able to put together an educated guess on what that very large project might be. Which, a little bit of a side note, I am filming the process of making that project and I eventually will release all of this footage. It just probably won't be until November, December-ish. So I'm still kind of trying to plan how I want to structure that video. So if you could do me a favor and leave down in the comments below, would you rather have one really long, like, hour and a half, two hour video of just the entire process? Or would you rather have more smaller videos, like 20 to 30 minutes, on just each individual section? So if you have a strong preference either way, go ahead and let me know below. But anyway, this very large project is taking up a very large amount of my time and that is not going to change in the next couple of months. I have very big plans for this and it's gonna take a lot of time. But there is one important thing that I need to be able to make this project that I can share with you all. So this video is going to be all about how I constructed my very own embroidery frame. So there are some pieces that I'm going to need to embroider and be able to work on that are up to one yard wide and one yard deep, so a uh, one square yard. And as I was researching scroll frames and other embroidery frames, they basically work how the name suggests, they're like a scroll. So as you move on to different areas of your project, you just kind of scroll one end of it and it'll move it back and forth. Personally, I wanted to be able to have my entire piece just laid out flat and I not have to worry about the scrolling. Mainly because in addition to the embroidery and just the regular thread embroidery, I'm also going to be stitching on some sequins, beads, maybe gluing on a couple of rhinestones. And I didn't really like the idea of those beads and sequins and rhinestones getting rolled up in the scroll. I was worried about potentially either crushing some of those beads or maybe the beads getting snagged on the tool that I'm going to be stitching on. So then that led me through my very long extensive search for embroidery frames. Now I couldn't find any embroidery frames big enough and at first I was very discouraged because I would have to send off for like a custom one that was going to cost me like $500 to get a custom one made for as big as I could possibly get. And then I remembered, wait a second, sometimes quilters will hand quilt their quilts so there's gotta be some really big frames that you can do quilts on, right? So then I switched my search from embroidery frames to quilting frames. And then I started having a lot better luck in the sizes that I needed. I was also able to find a lot more resources on DIYing your own quilting frame. And I found one that basically came up with a really simple design for a PVC quilting frame. And it basically was just a big PVC cube. Now I had worked with PVC pipe previously. I had made kind of like a photo backdrop thing. So I knew PVC was really easy to work with and but more importantly, it was very, very cheap. Like seriously, at Home Depot, you can get a, a 10 foot length of three quarter inch PVC pipe for like under $4. I also like PVC because it's really easy to customize and as long as you don't cement the uh, like the joints to the actual pipe, it's really easy to pull things apart, move things around it, and adjust the size as you need. Because for some of these bigger pieces, I wanted a four foot by four foot frame so that I would have plenty of room to be able to get that three foot by three foot square in. But some of these pieces are gonna be a lot smaller and I don't need nearly that much surface area. So all I would have to do is just swap out some of the parts with smaller pipes. Now luckily because of that photo backdrop frame, I already had a lot of PVC pipe and just pure luck of the universe, a lot of it happens to be cut to the same lengths that I need. So this round of materials wound up only costing me $28.65, so for under $30 I now have a 4 foot by 4 foot fully customizable frame. And if you didn't already have the supply of PVC and you, and you had to be able to buy a little bit extra to make up for what I already had, You'd only need 20 more feet of PVC, which would run you about $8. And I already had two of the couplings that I need, which the little T ones are, are really cheap. I think those are like under $2 each. That's still only going to run you another 10, maybe 12 bucks. So essentially for around or under $40, you can build yourself this fully customizable, fully functional frame. I'm also going to experiment with, they make these little like PVC clamps that you can just kind of clamp around the PVC pipe. None of my local hardware stores keep those in stock, so I am going to have to send for those. But if that doesn't work out, I do have a couple of other ideas on how to actually mount the fabric to the scroll frame. It's not a scroll frame. I keep calling it a scroll frame. It's not a scroll frame. It doesn't scroll. That's the whole point. So those might run me another, I don't know, five bucks. 
So here for pretty much a maximum price of around $45, which considering the cheapest that I could find a quilting frame big enough that covered about that same size, say the cheapest ones I could find were about $150. And I found one at Joann's and one at Hobby Lobby. And I looked online and I read the reviews for the Hobby Lobby one and the reviews are kind of awful. So I think the investment is worth it. It's a lot less money and you get to build it to exactly the dimensions that you want. So all right then, let's go ahead and jump on in and I'll show you kind of my logic and my thinking behind the design process and how I wound up building my frame. Also no hot tea today because it is the middle of July in the middle of Georgia and it is very, very hot here. Ooh, wait, no, I have a hyper chiller. Oh, I might go make some iced tea real quick. So here is how I designed this frame. So I basically wanted a rectangular prism and I was worried that once I got up to this four foot by four foot square that it would start to be a little bit unstable and that it wouldn't, it might start to twist a little bit. So I designed in this crossbar uh, partially to try to hold everything in place, but also to give me something to kind of brace against. So as I'm getting closer into this center section, if I need to kind of reach over into the frame and reach over, um, I can kind of brace this crossbar against my legs and just kind of lay on top of that just to make sure that I'm not accidentally like tipping the whole thing over. And this is how I planned out how I made my cuts. So I don't know if you can see the dot grid on this notebook paper, but basically I just, just measured out sort of an equivalent of a 10 foot long piece of PVC. And I just kind of colored in the uh, what I would need to try to figure out what I needed to cut on what pieces. Okay, so out in my hallway, I have two 10 foot lengths of PVC. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of PVC pipe from my little photo backdrop thing that I, I built a couple of years ago. So I was able to save a little bit of money. Not that PVC is particularly expensive because these 10 foot lengths were like $4 each, like under $4 each. So yeah, if you need to build something, build it out of PVC. So now I have a measuring tape, I have a Sharpie, and I have these little PVC cutters and I'm gonna go uh, cut myself my PVC. In order to decide how tall I wanted this frame to be, I sat on the floor, grabbed my yardstick, and I measured how much minimum clearance I would need to sit in a couple of different positions that I like to work in. Then I decided that I wanted it a little bit taller than that so that I wouldn't slouch too much and it would keep me sitting up a little bit straighter. And then I figured that 18 inches was a good height for that. I designed this frame to be modular so that I could adjust the frame to size based on how big the finished piece would be. I figured my maximum size could be about four feet by four feet because two feet is about the limit of how far that my arms can reach. So I needed three more four foot lengths and four 18 inch lengths. So I prioritized the four foot lengths and I cut the 18 inch out of whatever was left. Once I had everything cut, I gave everything a good rinse in the tub. Now I needed to make sure that I got rid of any dust or residue on the new pipes that they may have gotten from the hardware store, but I also needed to rinse off the pipes that I had stored in my shed because there was some dirt and some cobwebs on those as well. I made sure that I rinsed out the center of the pipes as well just to make sure that they were fully flushed out. All in all, I needed two T-bars, eight three-pronged elbow pieces, four 18-inch pieces, four 24-inch pieces, and seven four-foot long pieces. All right, so my PVC clips finally came in. I say finally, they came really quickly. It just took me a couple of weeks to get around to like opening this and filming it. So here are the ones that I'm using. They say attach tarps, netting, or shade cloth to pipe for three quarter inch PVC pipe. Hopefully they will be tight enough, but if not, I have a couple of ideas on how to make them grip a little bit better. So let me get these open. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just snap it on real quick. Ooh, yeah, that's tight. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. But check, let me grab this mess of chiffon that I was playing around with. I'm probably not gonna use chiffon, but chiffon is slippery. So this will attach to chiffon and keep that nice and taut. We should be fine. All right, let's try tucking at it. Oh yeah, that is, that's gonna work. I can't, I can't move this at all. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I think we're golden. Now the next question is how easily can I get these off? Can I just like pop them off? 
Hmm. Huh. I'm pleasantly surprised. I think this is gonna work out well. All right, so now really the last thing I have to do is uh, put it all together. All right, so now that it's been a couple months, let's see if I remember uh, how all this goes together. To assemble this, I started by placing the three-way elbow pieces on both sides of the 18-inch pieces. These legs were joined together by four four-foot pieces to form a square. I designed in a crossbar for stability on the bottom layer, so I used the T-bar to connect two two-foot pieces that are linked by a four-foot piece that extends across the bottom. And I finished off the bottom square with the two remaining four-foot long pieces. When I'm using this as a smaller frame, so a two foot by two foot frame, I don't worry about having any sort of cross bracing underneath, I just kind of balance it on those 18 inch legs. You know, I probably could have made this a lot easier on myself and made this smaller, but about two weeks after I bought everything and did all the measurements and started putting this together, I watched a Kathy Hay video and she's reconstructing the peacock dress she was talking about the embroidery and was wondering how they did the embroidery in these giant panels when the panels are so huge and you know logically you need about an arm length to the center so that you can get to the middle and she's like oh wait no they just started from the center and worked outward so i could have made a much more narrow thing and just worked outward uh, Oh man, I'm doing all this exercise and I'm not wearing my Fitbit. What does it count? Aside from the cat hair all over everything, uh, I think that I think that'll do it. Some netting on here. Oh, is this not wide enough? I thought it was. This is not 48 inch fabric. This is supposed to be 54 inch. Which means Joanne's lying to me. That's a, uh, I'd call that pretty taut. Huh. And that is how I constructed my giant timbre embroidery frame. So I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it came out really well. So I'm very glad my clips worked and my clips kind of stayed nice and tight, which my plan for if they eventually start to kind of stretch out and deform, or if they just weren't that tight, is I was going to take some flannel and just cut some rectangles of flannel and like, uh, super glue it into all of the individual little clips and the flannel will give it just that extra little tiny bit of grip that it needs to kind of grip onto the fabric and it'll also make the diameter just marginally smaller so that it'll give me a little bit of a tighter clip. So altogether I think this is a very cost-effective way to build a big frame like this. So you can see this was this was not an expensive frame and I got a really big frame out of it and I have a lot of little bits and pieces and moving parts that I'm really going to be able to customize and move around so if I need a smaller frame I'm going to be able to make that for myself. So if you are working on anything that you need a big piece of fabric like spread out really taut whether you're painting it, maybe you're hand doing a quilt, maybe you're really interested in puppet shows and you want to be able to project a light, maybe you're making your own projector screen. I think this is the way to go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this process. I hope this was informative. I hope this helps somebody out there. Now that this is done, I have 
I have a lot of work to do. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to me. I post a whole lot of sewing content. Most of what I do is vintage reproduction pattern reviews, but I do occasionally sprinkle in some other stuff like this. You can also feel free to give me a follow over on Instagram at Thread and Needlefish if you're interested in behind the scenes stuff, some sneak peeks, some things that don't even make it to YouTube. Anyway, I had a blast with this video. I always like getting to build things. It's always something I found really, really fun. So if you enjoyed this video, if you can leave me a like, a comment, a thumbs up, um, all that would help me out a lot. And that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!